Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome to our first real look into Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. The game was teased late last year with just a few screenshots, but we now have a full website with more information as well as a couple of blogs already posted to the site. There's a lot more to this game than in previous UG games, but let's take a look at what you can expect from Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. The latest upcoming release by Game Labs, Ultimate Admiral is finally taking the Ultimate General series to the seas from 1775 to 1815, spanning from the beginning of the Revolutionary War into the French Revolution, eventually leading into the Napoleonic Wars. The campaign itself seems to take on a very Empire Total War feel as it's divided into regionally distinct chapters across European and American waters. Images on the site are focused on the east coasts of North and Central America. Each chapter consists of multiple battles, events, or points of interest. There are stages in each chapter, with each stage consisting of one month. The stage thus far seems similar to the format that Civil War follows. After each stage, the map repopulates with other challenges and opportunities for the player to take. There are two factions you can choose to play. You can be a part of the world's largest fleet with the Royal Navy, where you'll take control of famed naval commander Horatio Nelson to assert British dominance on the seas or take charge of the newly founded United States under the command of John Paul Jones, taking a small and fledgling navy to become a rising superpower. Regardless, your enemies will be the same. For now, that includes Spain, France, pirates in a sense, and of course, either the United Kingdom or the United States, depending on the player's faction. While this really isn't historical, there were alliance or non-aggressions during this time between those nations, but in the context of Ultimate General, I think it'll work just fine. The game gets a bit deeper with the new mission system. There are now quests, events, missions, and points of interest, as we've mentioned before. These additions will create a reactionary environment that is aimed to create a living campaign at the outcome of said system. Losing a patrol event may lead to having to rescue a governor's daughter from pirates, but capturing a smuggler may trigger a pirate stronghold event gain extra loot, weapons, or even men. Missions themselves have changed a little bit since Civil War. Your standard minor and major battles are still present, but now there are missions where you'll just assign a number of ships over the course of several turns, and you'll have to weigh the success or failure of the mission to how many ships you choose to commit to, while also risking having needed them in an upcoming battle for a reward or something else of that nature. Fleet management will be the biggest aspect, it seems, for Ultimate Admiral. Each ship has unique characteristics, upgrades, commanding officers, and a crew. Having the right combination of all of these will determine just how efficient the ship is in battle. Weight will be your biggest limiter as you juggle between armor, guns, and transport space. Technology-based upgrades will help develop more powerful and flexible ships, and a skilled crew and officers are vital to the success of battles on both land and sea. Smaller ships will require fewer officers and a crew, while your massive ship of the lines will require multiple officers across all areas of the ship while handling a much larger crew to keep the ship running smoothly. Having an experienced officer with an inexperienced crew is going to be much more efficient than say having an experienced crew but with a newly ranking officer. Both renown and experience look to be shaking up a bit from Civil War. With technology now an active mechanic, you'll use renown from winning battles and quests to purchase new ships or dig into research to gain advantages over the enemy. Experience seems to work similar to Civil War, though acting more along the lines of the point system awarded after battles. You can use it to gain certain admiral skills, which gaining favor with the admiralty, increasing recovery rates and offering discounts to weapons. All skills will help your fleet to advance and conquer in the campaign and be well worth diving into. The real meat of Ultimate General has always been the battles, and Ultimate Admiral will be no different. Adding naval combat brings it to new levels and hits home that Empire Total War feel oh so sweetly. There are three types of battles in Ultimate Admiral. Naval battles will be the most intensive of the types as you'll simply have more to juggle. Managing your fleet won't be a simple task as you'll need to take factors like wind and sail deployment, angle of attack, armor and maneuvering of multiple ships at all times. Experienced Empire Total War fans should know all about how to manage that. For those who aren't experienced, the new AI feature will allow you to let them take control of whatever chips you choose. While this probably won't be the most efficient way to manage, it does give you some breathing room for those much larger battles. Grouping units, which is something I've begged for in Civil War for a long time, 
will indeed make its appearance in this game giving you even more control over a group of ships. Surrendering works similar to Civil War as units taking massive damage will fall pretty quickly, but in naval battles when they surrender, you'll need to send a boat out to the enemy to officially take their oaths. Landing operations is a new one to the game. When a bombardment isn't working by itself, you need to bring in the marines with the new joint land and sea battles. This gives your own troops some cover from the sea while taking on fortifications and other enemy troops. Lastly, we have good old regular land battles, the staple behind the Ultimate General series. From the screenshots and videos we've seen so far, it'll act pretty closely to the original series. I imagine that land battles and building your armies will stay relatively close to how Civil War does it, with recruiting, upgrading, and equipping various troops for the battles up ahead, though that might be more based on the transport ship characteristics rather than just building brigades like you did in Civil War. And that's all I'm looking to cover at the moment. There's a ton more information on the website, so if you'd like to know more, be sure to check out the link in the description. I'm going to be really honest, right now from what little we've actually seen, I'm pretty darn hyped for this game. The Ultimate General games are a blast to play, I've dumped close to 400 hours into both Gettysburg and Civil War, and to bring in naval combat into the Ultimate General combination is a great move and very worth keeping your eyes on for the future. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Keep an eye out for more Ultimate Admiral info on this channel as more comes out. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next video.